Welcome as we are gathered for worship today, the 5th of July, 2020, a celebration of our national heritage. We are gathered this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. These words of Thomas Jefferson echo throughout the years, calling the nation to repentance. God, who gave us life, gave us liberty. Can the liberties of a nation be secure when we have re removed a conviction that these liberties are the gift of God? Indeed, I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just, and that his justice cannot sleep forever. We confess our sins this day using President Abraham Lincoln's proclamation for a national day of fasting, humiliation, and prayer written on April the 13th, 1862. We have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power, as no other nation has ever grown. But have we forgotten God? Have we forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace, and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us? And have we vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pray to the God that made us. It behooves us then to humble ourselves before the offended power to confess our sins, national and individual, and to pray for clemency and forgiveness. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for, God, for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a nation founded on the Bible. The Word of God was considered foundational in the establishment of the government. President John Quincy Adams extolled the importance of the Bible, the first and almost the only book deserving of universal attention is the Bible. The founding fathers of this nation believed it to be self-evident that God is the source of all laws, and the Bible is the standard of right and wrong. In the words of President Woodrow Wilson, the Bible is the one supreme source of revelation of the meaning of life, the nature of God, and the spiritual nature and need of all humankind. It is the only God of life which really leads the spirit in the way of peace and salvation. President Andrew Jackson encouraged all people to go to the scriptures. The joyful promises it contains will be a balsam to all your troubles. A reading from Jeremiah. 
The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Here ends the reading. This is a nation renewed by prayer. In the summer of 1787, representatives met in Philadelphia to write the Constitution of the United States. After they had struggled for several weeks and had made little or no progress, 81-year-old Benjamin Franklin rose and addressed the troubled and disagreeing convention that was about to adjourn in confusion. He said, in the beginning of the contest with Britain, when we were sensible of danger, we had daily prayer in this room for divine protection. Our prayers, sirs, were heard and they were graciously answered. All of us who were engaged in the struggle must have observed frequent instances of a superintending providence in our favor. Have we now forgotten this powerful friend? Or do we imagine that we no longer need his assistance? I have lived, sirs, a long time, and the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth, that God governs in the affairs of humankind. And if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, is it probable that an empire can rise without his aid? We have been assured in the sacred writings that except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain, that build it. I firmly believe this. I therefore beg leave to move that henceforth prayers imploring the assistance of heaven and its blessing on our deliberations be held in this assembly every morning. Less than 100 years after, this urgent plea was made. Knowing that intercessory prayer is our mightiest weapon and the supreme call for all Christians today, I pleadingly urge our people everywhere to pray, believing that prayer is the greatest contribution that our people can make in this critical hour. I humbly urge that we take the time to pray, really pray. Let there be prayer at sunup, at noonday, at midnight, at sundown, all throughout the day. 
Let us pray for our children, our youth, our aged, our pastors, our homes. Let us pray for our churches. Let us pray for ourselves that we may not lose the word concern out of our Christian vocabulary. Let us pray for our nation. Let us pray for redeeming love, for moral forces everywhere, for our national leaders. Let prayer be our passion. Let prayer be our practice. A reading from Matthew. Ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give a stone? Or if the child asks for a fish, will give a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? This is a nation whose people are blessed. God is the source of all good gifts. All blessings flow from God's grace. In the words of President Abraham Lincoln, it is the duty of nations as well as of men to own their dependence upon the overruling power of God and to recognize the sublime truth announced in the Holy Scriptures and proven by all history that those nations only are blessed whose God is the Lord. In his infinite wisdom, God blesses his people with what they need, not necessarily what they ask for. Hear the words of an anonymous soldier describing God's blessings to him. I asked God for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn humbly to obey. I asked for help that I might do greater things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I asked for riches that I might be happy. I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have the praise of all. I was given weakness that I might feel the need of God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I got nothing that I asked for but everything that I hoped for. Almost despite myself, my unspoken prayers were answered. I am among, I am among all people most richly blessed. The psalmist says, happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. A reading from St. Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And then he began to speak and taught them, saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will now be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, 
for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Here ends the reading. This is a nation stirred by commitment. At the birth of this nation, Patrick Hen Henry addressed the convention in Richmond, Virginia with these now famous words. Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. As history unfolded, many would give their lives for this nation and for the principles that they believed in. At the dedication service of a cemetery in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, President Abraham Lincoln spoke eloquently of commitment. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all people are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who gave their lives that the nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate. We cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated here to their unfinished work, which they who fought here have thus far nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from those honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that those dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the, from the earth. The people of this nation were once again reminded of the need for commitment by President John F. Kennedy, who said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. A reading from Joshua. Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, 
whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Here ends the reading. Living together in faith, we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for this nation and its people using the prayer delivered on July 3rd, 1947 by former chaplain of the U.S. Senate, Peter Marshall. God of our fathers, whose almighty hand hath made and preserved our nation, grant that our people may understand what it is that they celebrate each year on the 4th of July. May they remember how bitterly our freedom was won, the down payment that was made for it, the insp installments that have been made since, since the Republic was born, and the price that must yet be paid for our justice and liberty. Lord, may freedom be seen not as the right to do as we please, but as the opportunity to be pleased in doing what is right. May it ever be understood that our liberty is under God and can be found nowhere else. May our faith be something that is not merely stamped upon our coins, but expressed in our lives. And let us, let us as a nation not be afraid of standing alone for the rights of all. We know that we shall be true to the pilgrim dream when we are true to the God that they worshiped. To the extent that America honors thee, will thou bless America and keep her true as thou hast kept her free, and make her good as thou hast made her rich. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We hear Jesus' invitation, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We invite all to receive the bread and wine of the Lord's table within our public service of worship each Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m., or also offered in the parking area of Messiah Lutheran Church from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The congregation of Messiah Lutheran Church thanks you for joining our worship this morning. And we continue to invite you to join us each Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. In public worship in our sanctuary at 1106 Yemen's Hall Road, or by joining us once again for our online liturgy. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. And now may we go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.